Hello, this is uh, the AutoCAD FaceCast. We're broadcasting right now live from the fourth floor um, of our building in San Francisco. Um, I'm here today with uh, Rob Cohey. My name is Charlie Crocker. I'm a product manager from the AutoCAD team. And um, we've been talking a lot about PLM and PLM 360s, a, a new thing we've got at Autodesk. And so I've brought Rob Cohey here and um, we're going to have a conversation with him. So tell us a little about yourself, Rob. Yeah, so hey everybody, I'm Rob Covey. I'm a product manager for our new lifecycle management solution, Autodesk PLM 360. Awesome. So um, I'm an AutoCAD guy. My customers are AutoCAD people, right. but we don't really have a lot of understanding about what really PLM is. Okay. Um, and I, I've heard that it's something related more to the manufacturing market, mm -hmm. and a lot of our customers are doing architectural stuff or engineering, yeah. that construction, that kind of thing. So can you tell us a little about what PLM is? Sure. So PLM, as it's kind of defined in the market today, has been defined as product lifecycle management. And when you think about it in that sense, absolutely, you think of manufacturing right away. But PLM really is lifecycle management. And it could be product lifecycle management. It could be process. It could be project or product. Right, so you can really swap out the P with you know basically any other type of thing that that really concerns you. So you really, could do so you could do a, a building. A building is this a product, or it could be part of a process. Absolutely. So it really any any process has its own life cycle. It has okay. a start point. It has some sort of work phase, and it has some sort of ending phase. And sometimes those processes spawn other processes, okay. and that's what PLM is all about. Okay. Well. Let's just jump right into it and let's see a little bit of what the interface looks like and how people interact sure. with it. Sure, why not? So I've got a... Um, do, do you mind actually logging out and logging in? Because sometimes it's it just helps for people to see it right from the beginning. Sure, why not? Okay. So here I've got PLM 360 and I'm logged into one of our one of my sample sites here. And, and really what happens when you log into PLM 360 is you're immediately presented with the information that's most relevant to you as an end user. So for example, if I'm concerned about you know, gross margins or RFQs or you know, what items in my item master are relevant, I'm presented with a dashboard so it's running real time So reports. you said RFI, RF, uh, RFQ. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of our, the companies that use AutoCAD um, are bidding on a lot of different projects. They have yeah. subcontractors that are bidding with them. Right. Um, is that what you mean, kind of being able to manage that here? Right, absolutely. And that's the great thing about PLM 360 is it, is it brings people together both inside your organization and outside your organization to get them the right piece of information at the right time in the life cycle of cool. a process. Cool. So, And that's really what we're talking about here in this section down below the dashboard is the my outstanding work. So when I log in, I can immediately prioritize the processes that are currently assigned to me as the end user to perform something on. Now, you talk about processes. PLM 360 has a number of out of the cloud, because it's a cloud-based lifecycle right. management solution, out of the cloud processes that our customers So when you say out of the right cloud, away. you mean out of the box. So if I just log into PLM to start with, these are things that I can do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if you log in, you can do things like project management or engineering task management or design task management, new product introduction, things you know that you would you would expect from a from a PLM solution in the engineering area, change management. It's huge, right? Being able to request change and initiate change. We've got procurement, we've got some quality stuff. And we even have uh, architectural customers using this for things like project management, right? To be able to issue uh, the, all of the tasks related with executing on a change. So it's, it's, it's a really powerful tool. And one of the things I haven't really emphasized yet is the way in which PLM 360 is different, right? Because there, there's PLM tools on the market today. So, but, so you mean how is PLM 360 different than other PLM tools? Is yeah. That, okay. Yeah, so if you think about enterprise PLM, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Uh, I need an IT group. I'm going to go to a bid. I'm going It's going to cost me a lot of money on like resources. I'm going to have to hire a consultant. Yeah. Um, deployment hassles. I mean, right. that's what I, I mean. I'm just imagining the infrastructure. I'll need a PLM group <laughs> to manage my. Yeah, absolutely. So it's for enterprise customers who have a right. lot of money and a lot of time to invest in this. So a lot of our firms are small firms. I mean, these right. are you know 10, 20 person, even five, one person com uh, companies. So. Is right. this really for them? Absolutely. So PLM 360 is cloud-based. So as a result of it being a cloud-based application, it's instantly on. There are no upgrades. There are no installs. There are no global IT efforts right. getting PLM up and running very, very quickly. Okay. 
that, that, that sounds good, but what I'd like to do is kind of see if, how it fits into a, a workflow. So sure. I, I got an idea of a, a customer who, um, you know, he's got a team, they're either in the field or maybe in the office, and they've gotten uh, a change request maybe from sure. the, the, uh, either a subcontractor or from the actual building owner or something, and now I'm the bottleneck. But right. I, left, I left work early because I had to do some shopping. So I'm, at, I'm like at Home Depot and um, you know, I, the weekend is about to start. So if we don't get this thing done, then it's going to put a lot of people um, behind schedule. So right. um, how would that kind of thing work with sure. uh, PLM 360? Sure. So up on the screen right now, we have um, a change request, something something's, you know, relatively simple. So um, basically what a user does is he goes in and he puts in basically the, I'm thinking about a change, right? And that change is, it can be a drafting related change. It can have some costs associated to it. And really I'm trying to just communicate what it is my intentions are without actually executing on it. And that's what we talk about when we mean process management, right? Getting people the right piece of information, collaborating with them so that they have access to, well, why is this person even submitting the change, right? So this looks all filled out. Did you, I mean, how do you actually fill this out? Can you show how? Yeah, absolutely. So, so here, you know, what you would typically do is you would go in and you would do something like, you know, change the storage room. It, it, so in user training for PLM right. 360, if you know how to fill out a web form, you know you already know how to use okay. the application. And from a technology standpoint, you already have the technology installed on your iPad or on your laptop to use it. There's nothing to download, you simply log in. Right, so here you just go in and fill out these fields and basically all you do then from that point is submit the, uh, submit the request over in the workflow actions and I've already actually submitted this particular request, so it's actually sitting in your to-do list. Okay, so I've if I log on approval. here, so it's in my to-do list in Absolutely. PLM. So I'll go onto the iPad, and I'm going to... Get out of your email. Get out of my email, <laughs> uh, log into PLM. Um, so here I am in PLM, right here. I'm in the PLM, and I just pressed uh, my outstanding work, and what comes up is change the storage room to a laundry room. So if I click on that, it shows me the change request. Okay. It looks like there's an attachment. So if I wanted to view this thing, yeah. there's that attachment right there. So you now have actually sent me a copy of the DWG. Right. You sent me a copy of the DWG that I need to work on as well. Yeah, okay. so basically you could open that up and say AutoCAD WS, right? You're like you said, you're standing in line. Okay, well, let Home me open Depot. it in WS. So sure. I'm now I'm in line at Home Depot. They've sent me the drawing. I need to approve it. So yes, this room can be turned into a laundry room. So I'm comfortable with that change. I have no problem with it. So what do I do now? So now you go into uh, you go back into PLM 360. Um, you will go into the workflow actions and you would say, yeah, I approve it. Okay, so I've just done the workflow actions. Yep. And there it is. I'm going to select an action. So right here, let me select it. Yep. So while during that selection process, really another thing that PLM 360 brings to bear is that is that total accountability as to who did what, when, and where. Okay. So approve. Yep. And then what? You'll hit save step down. Save step. And confirm. And confirm. Okay. Okay, so now when you save that step and confirm it, I actually, it comes back to me, and I get notified that, that, that something's actually been updated. So right. I'll zoom in on your screen? Yep. So we take a look at the screen here, we can see that, you know, I submitted it for review, it went out to Charlie Crocker, and Charlie said, yeah, I, I, I want to go ahead and approve that. And then there's one more step in this particular workflow that says, all right, my suppliers approved it, I can go ahead and submit it for final approval. I'll save that and confirm it. So here what we performed was a change request. Right. Right? The way that we have this set up in the workflow is that once the change request has gone all the way through its workflow, we have it set up to where now it automatically creates another process. So for example, this change request actually initiated a brand new change order. Right? So one process spawns another. And that's really where Okay. You start to see the difference with PLM 360 as compared to managing that exchange of information right. with Outlook, for example, right? It would have been, it would have normally been you and I going back and forth and you can see that that change order and all the information 
from the change request came into this next process. So maybe another team of people. So, so this, there. so this, like the way that um, I might have typically done this would be um, the guy in the office would send me an email with an attachment. Um, if I didn't have WS or I didn't have PLM, I would I would either just see it lost in all of my email. Um, I might you know not address it immediately. Um, and then you know a couple days pass, etc. But with using PLM and just kind of keeping track of it, and that I'm able to see this stuff in real time. And then if I do it, so just going back and forth with you is one thing. But could I, if this change request, you know, uh, instigated uh, changes for several people on a team, would it be able to like you know do a mass email or at least email a larger group of people? Because there's a, sometimes a lot of subcontractors right. or, or four or five drafters on a project, that kind of thing. Yeah, and you can, you can, you can set up different distribution lists, you can set up different, uh, uh, different approval lists so that as that process moves from one stage to another, the appropriate people get notified they have the right security permissions to log in and security. So if, if, if this person is outside, like let's say that it's a government agency that I want to approve something, or let's say it's a, a subcontractor who's not part of my company, am mm -hmm. I, how can I restrict that they don't see the whole PLM system? They just see like a, a piece of it. Sure. So it's all based upon your login permissions. Okay. The administrator of PLM 360 within each organization determines who can see what, when, and where. Okay. All the way down to the different section permissions within the same record. So here's a good use case example. Let's say I want to send out an RFI and part of that RFI for my internal use has sensitive information in it. My own costs, for example. Right. Well, you can, you can restrict just that section of data so that only your internal users can see it rather than Think about, about what's done today. You gather that information, you strip it out, right? What you don't want people to see, and then you attach it as an email and you send it to and somebody. And then, I mean, the issue becomes you don't know what's current. It. You don't, you know, people have got different versions of the documents floating around. Right. So it sounds like you can control both how you distribute the information. If somebody does an action, you can distribute the, 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 the next step. Yeah. And you can also make sure people are accessing the most current stuff. This sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to, to talk to you about this, um, but I'm actually really interested because um, we're live with you guys on Facebook right now. Um, we do have the open chat, so if you have any questions for, uh, for Rob or I, um, especially Rob around the PLM 360, um, we can answer some questions right now. So um, are there any questions yet or should we do a little more exploring? Um, we do have one question. Uh, the, the question is, how much does PLM 360 cost? Okay, so we've, we were talking earlier about how PLM solutions are traditionally enterprise solutions, right? Very costly. Let me guess. So let me just guess the, the price here, okay? I, I would install a server. I would hire somebody. So I'm talking about, you know, to get a PLM system, I'm going to go out to bid. I'm going to spend 20000 on the software. I'm going to buy a server. I'm going to hire a bunch of people. So like my, my just to get started, it's going to cost me 100, 100 grand. No, not with PLM 360. PLM 360 it provides all of the tools, all of the processes directly out of the, out of the cloud, like we talked about earlier, for $75 per user per month. 75 per month, okay. <laughs> that's right, and, and that's really, you know, Carl, Carl Bass, when we launched this, said we didn't want to do PLM until we could do it right. Think about how Autodesk approaches technology. We take traditionally very expensive, very hard to use technology and make it affordable and easy to use. So somebody could very easily just start by getting one or two seats to kind of play around with it and without really incurring a very large cost. I mean, they could, they could really easily just start to kind of engage with it and understand how it fits in their workflow. You know, that's the thing about PLM 360 is, is it's organic growth within, with, within customers is something that we see just at every single example. I want to start with, say, engineering project right. management. And then, and oh, expand. there's another process that I need to right. communicate with other people. And then they adopt that one. Okay. You don't have to jump into the deep end of the pool after months and hundreds of thousands of dollars right. of investment. Right. By the time you're done deploying, it's already out of date. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not this. The, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, just a clarification on how do you install PLM 360 on your machine? Okay. So that's, that one's easy. Um, you already have what you need to run PLM 360 installed in your machine. So there's no installation. There's no server to install. There's no server to maintain. There's no enterprise-wide upgrades that take months and, you So know, when you say that, I think what you mean is it's browser-based. So browser -based. if you have a browser, it's going to work. You right? already have so the technology. So I was using to Safari on here. He's using Chrome on here. You could use IE. Mm -hmm. Firefox. Firefox. Sure. Okay. So it's just, it's browser-based. Yep, absolutely. Okay. 
Any other questions? So if someone, if an AutoCAD user wants to learn more about PLM 360, where should they go? How should they go about learning more about it? Okay, that one's easy. Uh, our website is www.autodeskplm360.com and right at the bottom there's a little button for buy it now. Uh, there's also other buttons for, uh, for see it now, several demos you know, that are very specific to say engineering tasks or project management. You know, obviously some things that we don't necessarily have time j to demonstrate today, we could really spend all day in it if right, we wanted to. Right. Um, but yeah, definitely plm360.com and, uh, and, and check out some of the features when and the we functions. Were, when we were talking earlier too, um, he'd mentioned that uh, of the people that have already started to use PLM, a lot of them are in the AEC industry and the architecture industry. And I think that was a surprise to us initially. Sure. Um, but I mean, this thing's really well set up for both manufacturing and uh, AEC uh, architecture, engineering, construction workflows. You know, when we launched it at Autodesk University, we had architects coming out of the woodwork saying, I have done research on PLM solutions because we needed that process. We needed to be able to exchange information with contractors, um, with other folks both inside and outside our organization and have a really flexible workflow. But the PLM solutions that were on the market were just too rigid for them to be right. able to adopt. The cost associated to them was another was another prohibitive factor, and yeah, oddly enough, just as many we have just as many manufacturing customers using PLM 360 at this very early stage as uh, as we do manufacturers and That's some great. other industries. Any other questions? We do have a question from PLM Dork wants to know <laughs> uh, where does my data go? Does it live on Autodesk servers? Okay, so yes, uh, the short answer of that is yes, but uh, we have some flexibility. Um, when it comes to how you manage your documents as well. So your data certainly goes up in, in, into and our data And when you say center. data, you mean the, 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 metadata. The, the user, the metadata, the, the change order requests, but, not, but the, the DWG files or the CATIA files or the PDF files, those things could be... Right, so when it comes to document management, because that's always a, a topic of discussion, PLM 360 is really the honey badger of PLM. We really don't care where you store your documents. Mm -hmm. You can have it either inside of PLM 360 because we have some we we have some document management solutions right inside as attachments. You saw an attachment, but that DWG file could also sit inside a Buzzsaw, and we could access it through PLM 360. Okay. It could sit in A360. It could sit in Dropbox. It could sit in wherever. It that could sit in somebody's sh SharePoint behind their firewall. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and because really getting access to the data, regardless of where it's at. Really what I'm trying to do with PLM 360 is support the process around the distribution, the management, or the change of okay. documents. But if somebody wanted to, the documents could be stored within PLM 360 also. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, okay. yes. Perfect. Um, I think that's all the questions we have right now. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for uh, attending this FaceCast. Um, I'm excited about PLM 360 and uh, Autodesk 360 and how we're moving a lot of our processes to the cloud. Um, and being able to use mobile devices and, and desktop, uh, desktop tools as well. So um, from San Francisco uh, live, uh, we look forward to seeing you at another FaceCast. Take care.